Astronomers say the magical magnetism of gravity is what keeps all the oceans of the world stuck to the ball Earth. <laughs> they say that because the Earth is so massive, by virtue of this mass, it creates a magic force able to hold people, oceans, and atmosphere tightly clung to the underside of the spinning ball. Unfortunately, however, they cannot provide any practical example of this on a scale smaller than their planet. For example, a spinning wet tennis ball has the exact opposite effect of the supposed ball Earth. Any water poured over it simply falls off the sides, and giving it a spin results in water flying off 360 degrees like a dog shaking after a bath. Astronomers concede the wet tennis ball example displays the opposite effect of their supposed ball Earth, but claim that at some unknown mass, the magic adhesive properties of gravity suddenly kick in, allowing the spinning wet tennis ball Earth to keep every drop of gravitized water stuck to the surface. <laughs> Again, their theory flies in the face of all practical evidence, but they have been running with it for 500 years, so why stop now? If the Earth were a globe rolling and dashing through space at the rate of 100 miles in 5 seconds of time, the waters of seas and oceans could not by any known law be kept on its surface. The assertion that they could be retained under these circumstances being an outrage upon human understanding and credibility. But as the Earth, that is, the habitable world of dry land, is found to be standing out of the water and in the water of the mighty deep, whose circumferential boundary is ice, we may throw the statement back into the teeth of those who make it and flaunt before their faces the flag of reason and common sense, ascribed with the proof that the Earth is not a globe. In one portion of its long route, the Great River Nile flows for a thousand miles with all with a fall of only one foot. This is this is a feat which, of course, would be a sheer impossibility if the Earth had spherical curvature. Many other rivers, including the Congo in West Africa, the Amazon in South America, and the Mississippi in North America, all flow for thousands of miles in directions totally incompatible with the supposed globular Earth. Rivers run, run down to the sea because of the inclination of their beds, rising at an altitude above sea level, in some cases thousands of feet above the sea. They follow the easiest route to their level, the sea. The Piranha and Paraguay in South America are navigable for over 2,000 miles and their waters run the same way until they find their level of stability where the sea tides begin. But if the world were a globe, the Amazon in South America that flows always in an easterly direction would sometimes be running uphill and sometimes down according to the movement of the globe. Then the Congo in West Africa that always pursues a westerly course to the sea would in the same manner be running alternately up and down. When that point of the globe exactly between them was up, they would both be running up although in opposite directions and when the globe took half a turn they would be running down. We know from practical experiment that water will find its level and cannot by any possibility remain other than level or flat or horizontal. Whatever term may be used to express the idea, it is therefore quite out of the range of possibility that rivers could do as they would have to do on a globe. Whoever heard of a river in any part of its course flowing uphill? Yet this would require to do if the earth were a globe. Rivers like the Mississippi, which flow from north southwards towards the equator, would need, according to modern astronomic theory, to run upwards, as the Earth at the equator is, sol is a solid, is said to bulge out considerably more, or in other words, is higher than, higher than at any other part. Thus, the Mississippi, in its immense course of over 3,000 miles, would have to ascend 11 miles before it reached the Gulf of Mexico. There are rivers which flow east, west, north, and south. That is, rivers are flowing in all directions, over the Earth's surface. And at the same time now, if the Earth were a globe, some of these rivers would be flowing uphill and others down, taking it for a fact that there is really an up and a down in nature, whatever form she assumes. But since rivers do not flow uphill and the globular theory requires that they should, it is a proof that the earth is not a globe. 